It's been a hell of a year for phones in 2017. Um, so I've actually been doing a series of experiments that are scientific-ish. Um, I've already done the best, uh, the b fastest phone of 2017, and I've also done the best battery life of 2017, which I'll link to both of those below if you want to check them out. Today, though, let's see which phone of 2017 has the best portrait mode. Now, portrait mode is the concept of taking a photo on your phone and then through software trickery, get it to blur out the background and keep the uh, foreground in focus to kind of mimic that of a fast aperture lens on an SLR. And while it's definitely not perfect, uh, the processors in a lot of these phones are able to do a pretty good job, honestly, um, at least if like the settings are exactly correct. Um, but I've chosen four phones that I think do the best job and we've put them head to head to see which is the best overall. So for this, we have the iPhone 10, the Pixel 2 XL, the Note 8 with live focus mode instead of portrait mode, and the Huawei Mate 10 Pro using its wide aperture mode instead of portrait since it actually has more features and it works on things that aren't just people. For whatever reason, the portrait mode only works on people. I don't know what that's about. And for this experiment, I took the same photo as best as I could with each device in varying conditions. Now in this first photo, I quickly took a shot of my latte in a well-lit coffee shop, and right away you can see that the iPhone 10, the one I thought would do the best here considering the conditions, actually botched it pretty bad. Uh, it kind of, the blur spilled over into the cup uh, in a lot of places and just all around looks pretty unnatural. The Huawei and the Note 8 seem to do the same, but not as drastically, and the Pixel 2 XL I think is pretty undeniably the winner in this photo at least. Next, I took a photo of myself using the front-facing portrait mode on each of the phones. Now, the Note 8 doesn't actually have portrait mode, unfortunately, uh, but I wanted to just show a comparison of what selfies would look like on it anyway. Here, we can see that the iPhone 10 just kind of killed it. Uh, it does a great job, most likely due to all the extra sensors in the front, of determining what part of the image is my face and what part is the background and adding a natural-looking blur. The Pixel did a decent job, except for that girl who happens to have a similar complexion to mine uh, that it thought was part of my own face since she was positioned so close to it. And the Mate 10 Pro did a decent job, just blurred out some of my hair and part of my ear against the white background. Now I get the girl's face and the fact that I'm pretty white, but I'm not the color of the ceiling. Thanks. Next, I took a photo of my friend in another coffee shop. I like coffee shops, if you guys don't know. And in this one, I'd have to go with the iPhone 10, the Note 8, Pixel and then the Mate 10 Pro in that order. And I base that on the fact that the Mate 10 did some weird things around the outline of her face for some reason, if you look closely. Uh, the Pixel blurred out the left better than the right and blurred out the computer a little bit, even though it's kind of in the same field that she is. Uh, and the Note 8 did a good job gradually blurring things out more as they were further away, i.e. the water bottle is slightly less blurry than the background, which is how a real fast aperture camera would have handled it. And the iPhone 10, although it had to zoom in quite a bit, just like the Note 8, because of that telephoto lens, it managed to do a natural blur effect like the Note 8 and a good job of keeping the right subject in the foreground versus the background. So now another selfie in a super bright area this time, which is not easy for any of these phones to do. Uh, the Note 8 doesn't have portion mode on the front again, so that's just here for a comparison. The Mate 10 might actually win for the best delineation of foreground and background with just a piece of my hair at the top left being out of whack, but it overexposed the crap out of the image. The iPhone 10 probably did the second best with the blur effect, but I'm properly exposed and sharper for sure. And the Pixel just kind of botched it with that weird clear area to the left of my face. Why does it keep doing that in the same spot on my face? I don't know. Can't have for some rock'em sock'em robots. In this one, they all did pretty well, actually, considering the tiny parts in this subject, like the ropes, etc. Uh, but the winner here is probably the Pixel 2 XL for just a good blur job and sharp image with mostly accurate colors. I would actually have given it to the iPhone 10 because I think the colors are a little more accurate here, but the weird things happening to the pole and the rope on the left sort of pull your eyes there and you kind of just lose the cool factor that portrait mode is supposed to give you. The Note 8 and the Huawei did a good job here too, but the coloring in the Huawei is pretty off, uh, as well as the weird coaster in the background of the Note 8 being in focus for some odd reason, uh, brings them both down in my opinion. And there we go, portrait mode of sorts on the top four phones. Uh, I think for the front-facing camera, it kind of got to give it to the iPhone 10. 
Um, because of all those extra sensors on the front, I imagine, it, has a, uh, it does a good job of figuring out where my face is and the background is and figuring all that stuff out. And then of course it just takes good photos, so the coloring and the exposure and all that's pretty good. The Pixel though, I would say is not too far behind and it's kind of impressive considering that it doesn't have any of those sensors, but it's just not quite as good. Now for the rear camera, I'm a little torn. Now, the Huawei I can pretty much just eliminate because it, sometimes it would get the blur right, but then it would get the color wrong. Or it would get the color right and then the blur wrong. That happened a lot. Um, the Note 8 uh, did actually a pretty decent job, uh, but it, it, it did struggle a little bit sometimes. The nice thing about the Note 8 and the Huawei though is that they both have adjustable settings after the fact. So you can actually adjust the blur um, as needed on both of those phones. So if it wasn't quite the best blur job, uh, you can pull off the blur a little bit to kind of make it a little more natural. But I care more about, I think, being able to just take this shot and get it done really quick um, and not having to fiddle around with things. So, and not just that, also I think that the other two phones did a better job for the most part than the Note 8 and the Huawei anyway, but still. Uh, so now the iPhone, uh, did a really good job of having decent color, decent exposure, got the blur right most of the time, and so did the Pixel 2 XL. Um, both of them had some issues here and there and botched a couple of photos pretty badly, but so did all the phones to some degree. Uh, so eh, it's a tough choice. So I did what anyone would do when they have a tough choice like this. I went to the internet. So I put four photos from the iPhone 10 and four photos from the Pixel 2 XL uh, side by side, made a little collage and posted it on Twitter and YouTube and asked you guys to decide which one you thought looked better. And the truth is, after I tallied all the results, it was overwhelmingly Pixel. And since the whole point of this is to see what phone can take these awesome shots that are very impressive to your average person, uh, I think that pretty much uh, solves that. Pixel it is. There guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think of the test, of the phones, all that fun stuff. If you agree, disagree, be constructive with your criticism. Uh, but put that in the comments below. I'd like to hear from you guys. Uh, and then if you did like this video, please thumbs up it or share it. Always greatly appreciated. If you like this type of video, also subscribe to the channel. And if you, even if you are already subscribed, please make sure to click the bell next to the word subscribe so that you get notified when I do new videos if you'd like to know when I do new videos. Apparently nowadays, if you don't click that bell, it's a, it's a crapshoot as to whether you're gonna get notified or not. So please click the bell, I would appreciate it. And if you wanna see the videos, it'll help you. Um, but that's it. Uh, regardless, thanks for watching.